I mean, we were, you know, one of those kids of the 70s that was outside in the morning till night, hanging out with all the neighborhood kids, riding bikes, drinking out of hoses, always hiking. And I just, I love the feeling of being immersed with nature and mental health, beauty, physical healing. They're just all great reasons to plant native plants. So I'm a, I'm a fan. <laughs> In this episode, landscape architect Christine Ten Eyck welcomes us to the world of native plant landscaping, where nature and design exist in environmental harmony. Christine has a passion for native ecologies, water conservation, and local materials, as well as a long-standing commitment to the environment and sustainability. If you have a passion for plants and an eye for design, this episode is for you. Well, when I was in high school, you know, started thinking about what did I want to major in college? And I started out thinking either marine biology, architecture, or horticulture. I knew I was going to Texas Tech in Lubbock. My mother took me to pre-registration and she said, Christy, you've got to pick a major. You are not going undeclared. You look through that book and find something. Anyway, I thumbed through it and I said, oh, Landscape architecture, that's the perfect mix, Mom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to major in that. So that's how I got into landscape architecture and have worked as a landscape architect for about 40 years. When I was 25, I went on a raft trip down the Colorado River, and it just became this spiritual adventure down through the Grand Canyon, and I decided I needed to move to Arizona. So. When I was 25, I moved to Arizona. I was there for 22 years, which is where I really learned to appreciate native plants and every single drop of water that falls to the ground being in the Sonoran Desert. Then I started doing work in West Texas. It made me realize I missed my mom and dad and wanted to be closer to them who live in Dallas. So I convinced my husband to move back. So we've been here for almost 17 years. Why is it important to use native plants? Landscapes created with native plants thrive almost effortlessly while conserving precious resources. Native plants require less water, reduce the need for pesticides, and provide vital habitats for local wildlife. I unfortunately see a lot of people just forgetting about greenery and just putting down gravel thinking they're helping and it's not really helping the environment to do that. It makes it hotter. So plant a tree, plant a native tree. And you can start small because these plants really, they grow super fast with just a little bit of water. So you don't have to start with a huge plant. You can start with little, little bitty four inch pots. First of all, they're beautiful. Second of all, they're tough. They're highly resilient plants because they're made for this area. The best thing, too, is just the wildlife that they attract, the butterflies, all the pollinators, the birds. It's just an ever-changing, wonderful landscape. And it really does not take that much maintenance. You know, you're just saving the earth by planting native plants. And then, too, just cutting down on the heat of the urban heat island through having trees. It's just so many benefits. The number one mistake I see people making is watering the native plants too much. You know, we're living in times of drought. These plants do not take as much water as like a normal plant. So they're very drought tolerant. Some people think that native plants are just like cactus or, you know, stuff that grows by the highway, but it really isn't. It's a, it's a combination of our native trees, the oaks, the mountain laurels. I think people think of native plants and they think of all brown all the time. But as you see, it's emerald green when we've had rain. Now, in the summer, if we don't water, things will turn golden and brown. And we try to talk to our clients about appreciating those tones of browns and golds and maroons when things go a little more dormant and we need to embrace 
Every season, there's beauty in every season. Pease Park is one of Austin's oldest and most beloved parks. In 2014, the city of Austin adopted a master plan to revitalize this park and hired Christine's firm to help reimagine 12 acres known as Kingsbury Commons. The result was unexpected. Native plants became the central location of a community gathering place. I honestly think every project we do makes a difference um, because most of our projects, they were either a parking lot or, you know, it's a neighborhood where they never had any green space. So I, I do feel like all of our projects, we're always trying to infuse nature back into the city. I mean, the best part is, of course, seeing people enjoying something like Pease Park that we did that renovation on. You know, that was exciting to get that project. I mean, it's always scary when you work on something that's like a cultural, you know, love of a community. Everybody already loved Pease Park, but that, that recreational heart really needed redoing. A master plan had been done by WRT back east, and master plans are kind of general plans that kind of show where things might go, but they're not really detailed. And one of the things that they proposed was to open up the view to the lawn. And so that's what we did. We moved all of the play equipment. We got new play equipment, more natural play equipment and moved it off to the side, kind of up against the hillside there. That way we could preserve the long greensward, you know, of the lawn uh, when you first drive up. Not only does it bring the native plants into the city, but it brings people socially together. It's about mental health for humans as much as it is about plants and the planet. You know, we're, we're part of nature ourselves, so we need these plants to make us feel good. We relate to nature, and when we're, we have to live without it, it's, it's not good. <laughs> we get in bad moods. <laughs> the biodiversity of the plants attracts a diverse native wildlife. Biodiversity is important because you want to attract all animals. We don't want just monocultures because that may just be one species that likes that plant versus all kinds that like a little more of a mixture. Plant species go away just like an animal species can due to changes in the environment, whether it be development or climate change or whatever. I know the San Antonio Botanical Garden has a research department. The Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center does amazing research. And they, they go around all over the world to try to collect, you know, seed that they can then grow and reestablish. It's more soothing and healing, I think, to, to know you're helping the planet by using its native plants. I personally think it's really beautiful to look at every day. <laughs>